recording. My name is Adam <laughs> Green. I'm the Northern California VDC manager. Um, and what we'll go through today, is we'll talk a little bit about what is VDC? Um, how does VDC help with the environment? How did I get my position with the industry? And how can you become a part of the construction industry as well? I hope I can uh, give you guys all these answers and you guys maybe can uh, provide some answers at the end of the session today. So let's talk a little bit about my career story. Um, you know, I'm, a, I'm from the Central Valley. I graduated from Merced High School back in 2005. I went ahead and I attended the California State University, Sacramento. I started out in mechanical engineering, um, which was a super cool degree that I thought I would be super interested. I uh, did an internship and I found out, you know what, I, I like this, but I need, I need a little bit more expansive type of uh, information and roles. I wanted to learn more about the holistic approach to buildings versus just the mechanical systems. So I changed my major to construction management my second year in school um, and then graduated in construction management in 2010 at Sac State. Uh, I interned with three different companies while attending school. I interned with the mechanical engineering firm. I interned with a heavy civil um, construction firm where we built bridges and, and light rail systems. And then I also interned with another company who does much more of what I do now today, which is a, a commercial construction building company. Uh, I was hired with Turner Construction in uh, 2010. And I had, a, you know, I had a great first seven, eight years with Turner Construction. I worked on the Sacramento Airport, uh, the SMUD, it was SMUD East Campus Operations Center, which was a, a large utility, a net zero campus. Worked on Mount House High School out in the uh, Central Valley near the Altamont Pass. Worked on the Golden One Center, as you guys can see in the picture right there. And then I did a lot of business development with Turner as well, which is, you know, helping the organization uh, get new contracts and get new jobs. I then had an opportunity to go to Seattle for a couple of years and I worked for the Seattle Seahawks and I worked on their uh, stadium, uh, worked on quite a bit of projects of upgrading their facilities, their stadium and their practice facility. Um, Seattle was a big change for myself and my family. So even though that was a super, super cool job and opportunity, we decided to come back with Turner Construction. Uh, construction is, is my passion. It's what I love to do. And uh, Turner was such a great company in my first couple of years out of school. Uh, I went on and, and came back with Turner uh, last year, actually. Um, with Turner Construction, I've been part of a couple of different projects, um, including the California State Capitol, which is a, a big project we're working on right now where we are, we're going to split the capital in half and renovate the existing annex. So we'll keep the historical building, but we're, we're changing and renovating their uh, their existing office space, which they call the annex. I also took a role here in Northern California as the head of VDC in Northern California. And I introduced, I, I, uh, I would love for you guys to ask questions to, uh, throughout this presentation. I know we're in the recording session, but I think this is a good uh, conversation topic. Does anybody have any questions about my career history? All right, we'll go to the next step. So let's talk a little bit about Turner Construction and the project. So um, we we do quite a bit of, we're actually the nation's largest general contractor and we do projects mainly on building stadiums, airports, large scale facilities. But we also do small projects like tenant improvements where we built out offices and stuff like that. So um, some of the projects we I referred to before, the Golden One Center, we're building uh, one of Sacramento's largest uh, facilities right now, uh, Skyscrapers Downtown, which is the new Natural Resources Headquarters building. We've worked on the Festival of Arts in Laguna Beach, California, Sacramento Airport, Levi Stadium, and the brand new SoFi Stadium, which is such a cool project that they just started playing in this year. One of the big exciting projects that I'm excited to talk about is uh, the new San Diego International Airport, which is a $2.2 billion uh, addition to the international terminal. So this will be a big project. You'll see Turner out there for the next 
you know, five, six years. It's such a cool project um, and we're excited to be there. Some other notable projects we've done in uh, San Diego are the, the large central library in downtown San Diego with the one with the nice, uh, beautiful dome. We also worked on, majority of you guys may know this, but uh, the Grossmont High School science building that was built a couple years back. So that was a cool project. And we do a lot of school work down in San Diego. So let's talk a little bit about construction career opportunities. So in my mind, there's really two different paths. Um, there's the path of the career technical education where um, there's an opportunity to go to a trade school right after high school. In a trade school um, to the left-hand side, you know, we call it occupational education. You can get a certificate. You can actually go to a trade school, an apprenticeship program, and be part of the building trades. The building trades include carpenters, electricians, um, iron workers, pretty much all the professionals who are out in the field um, who get their hands dirty and are excited to be at the job site every day. Um, one of the big benefits about part of the career technical education route is you're able to start making money as soon as you come out of school. Um, even though you are going to trade school, there's opportunities in apprenticeship programs where you still can work during the day, go to school at night. So you're still making money as you're going to school and getting your uh, apprenticeship, life, apprenticeship license and soon uh, your journeyman license. So it's a great opportunity when I have a lot of uh, students in high school or, you know, family mates who were asked about the construction industry, I really encourage that route because it is a route and um, believe it or not, we're actually lacking the skilled labor force more than ever right now. The other route, which is the route that I went to was the co college or university where you can major in math and science, uh, science, technology, uh, engineering and math majors as well. I majored in construction management, but you can also go into engineering and business as well. Um, a lot of these career paths uh, allow you to become project managers, superintendents, uh, foremen, and uh, work for more on the office side of the business, the business side of things within a construction company. Both are great routes. And I'll be quite honest with you, both of them, you know, when, if you start out with the left-hand side, you probably make more money coming right out of your trade school than the, the university students should write. At the end of the day, you know, with a couple of years of experience, they end up making about the same amount of money. Um, you know, for the first, you know, five to 10 years of my career, I, I was working with tradesmen who pretty much made more money than me for, for a long period of time. So what is VDC? What's the department that I run in Northern California? VDC stands for Virtual Design and Construction. Uh, virtual design and construction includes a lot of um, 3D modeling, CAD-based, Revit-based programs, um, and it's, a, it's an opportunity where we are able to communicate um, what needs to be built in a virtual manner. We work with architects, engineers, and our construction professionals put these, uh, these ideas in three-dimensional um, ideas. So what does VDC include? It includes 3D virtual coordination, where we coordinate every single part and piece inside of a building before it's built. We also do model checking and analysis. Say an architect or an engineer hands us over a, a model. We go through, before we even start ordering materials and building this, we make sure that we are, the building is gonna be built correctly, it's constructible, and it's gonna, uh, we're gonna be able to purchase the materials. As you're uh, coordinating early in the design, the more things you can catch earlier on, the better off you'll be later on down the road. 4D scheduling, we like to put a 3D model and we like to show it growing um, with the schedule. We like to also do a lot of production tracking. We wanna know where every single piece of our material is before it arrives on the job site. We'll have a 3D model with structural steel up and we know based on the color of the structural steel model, whether it's being produced in the factory, whether it's on the delivery truck, or if it's already up installed out in the field. We like to do a lot of cost estimating based off of 3D models as well. We do 3D printing, which we'll talk about a little more later on down the road. Um, 
CD or 6D uh, operations handovers where we give a BIM model, building information model to a client, and we tie all of their maintenance manuals to it, which is super helpful later on down the road. When they're in their building for five years and something breaks down, they're able to go into that model and extract information pretty quickly. Mixed reality, this is the cool stuff that's going on in our industry right now. It's virtual reality and augmented reality. So this is opportunities where we can use things like the HoloLens, or we can use virtual, uh, the Oculus, virtual reality headsets, uh, to go ahead and immerse yourself into a, a project, uh, an architectural rendering, rendering, or maybe to see some unforeseen conditions, um, such as sewer pipe underground that we are not able to see with our eye. We like to use 3D models to plan out where the logistics are at throughout our jobs. So um, where our cranes are gonna be at, where our elevators gonna be at, uh, before we build the project. And you'll see that later on in some of our renderings. We like to do laser scanning, which is super cool. We like to laser scan and bring that information back to our BIM models. We do a lot of safety planning in 3D and a lot of model-based layout. Model-based layout is using systems like the Trimble Total Station and survey equipment to locate exactly where walls and structural steel concrete is supposed to be placed on our buildings. So let's talk a little bit about reality capture. Reality capture is an opportunity for us to take photographs, laser scans, or any type of photo documentation of a project at any specific time and share that information with multiple different people. Say you have an architect that lives in China that's designed your beautiful building. With COVID this year, a lot of people from China, this Chinese architect, could not come over here and truly fly here and view the project that he's designed. So we started getting creative and using different types of uh, reality capture options, such as laser scanning, 360 cameras, um, 360 cameras on top of hard hats, and something called a Matterport, which I'll show you guys later on. These are opportunities where we're able to share these images and the architect can feel like they're actually there, walk the project, truly view what the, the condition of the site is. Laser scanning can look something like this. It could also look like 3D point clouds where we can um, walk throughout the project itself. iStar camera is uh, uh, the image right there to the right. It really shows um, an architect or a client the very clear views of what their projects are looking like. Construction site is a really cool um, product that we're starting to use more and more on our projects. It's where we plug in um, 360 cameras on top of our hard hats and our superintendents, our engineers, they walk the job site. They're able to place these cameras on, on their hard hats and the camera tracks exactly where you're going throughout the project. And you can also go back at any point in time in the job and say, hey, look, this is March 11, 2020. What did my project look like then? Let's compare it to today. You can really see, hey, did we put uh, framing members inside of the wall? Did we put, uh, where did we put the electrical outlet for this wall? Did we cover it up? There's a lot of information you can see as you're constantly taking pictures and reality capture of the project. Matterport, I love the Matterport. It's, a, it's an opportunity where we take this tripod over here to the right-hand side. We, we put it at a couple of different places uh, throughout our project. It snaps 360 3D image photos, and we're able to see um, exactly what the project looks like. We like to use this when the projects are uh, in more of a finished mode. So let's go to a Matterport site right now. This is the project out in uh, the Silicon Valley, where once again, the architect was in New York City, the project was being finished and they wanted to go by, and make sure that everything was completed the way they envisioned it. So we took our Matterport out there, and we walked them throughout the project. Very similar to if you guys play around with real estate um, softwares, it's the same thing. So this is a super cool idea to reality capture 
what the projects are looking like right now. One of the last cool things are drone flights and the sky catch. Drone flights and sky catches are, to me, one of the, the super cool and sustainable things we're starting to do now. For the last 50 to 100 years, we've been using, um, traditionally using airplanes to fly over our projects and take aerial shots of what our projects look like. That uses gas, that uses a lot of resources. Um, now we're starting to use drones to do the same type of high quality images. We're even able to do even a little more with them um, as we can produce 3D image, images from the aerial shots as well. Um, here's a drone flight sky catch image of one of the high schools that we just built in Northern California. And I see there's a couple of questions in the chat, so I'll answer those. Building information modeling is an intelligent 3D model-based process that gives architecture, engineering, and construction professionals the insight and tools more efficiently plan, design, and construct and manage buildings. It's like Google Street View. I, I agree with that 100%, Jim. So let's talk a little bit about site logistics. When we produce these building information models, we like to show a lot of things that are going to go around the job site and how we're going to get people in and out of the buildings. So this is why we create site logistics models. This is the project that I was speaking of earlier, which is the California State Capital Project. Uh, very cool project where we're going to demo half the building and rebuild it back. Um, we like to produce site logistics models to show how people are going to come in and out of the buildings. We like to show how we're going to impact the neighborhood. Are there trees that are going to be impacted? Where are we going to put our crane on the project? So we like to use these 3D models to communicate visually with the owners, the clients, and even our own staff of how we're going to build these buildings. Once again, this is another example of a site logistics plan in Baltimore, Maryland, where it was a very tight site. We needed to figure out how to get the crane up and down the small streets. Site logistics can be very simple. You know, I, I highly recommend that you uh, go into Google SketchUp and create your own um, logistics models. Do a mock project and see if there's an opportunity where you can you know, make fences, make buildings. And it can be very simple, such as these ones. This was a school that we uh, were building in the Bay Area right now. Virtual constructability reviews is another opportunity where we use 3D models. Once again, I, I like to talk about uh, how does this impact the real life and the real world? So this is a very cool terracotta exterior skin of a building that we're building in San Francisco. Right? Our staff was having trouble, same with the architects, of how we were truly going to build it. How do all these intricate parts and pieces get put together before uh, we start ordering the materials out in real life? So what our virtual design and construction team did is they modeled it in 3D ahead of time which took them, you know, 10% uh, of the time versus us trying to figure it out in the field. So we modeled it and we carefully put together a plan for our carpenters and our laborers of how to produce and build a mock-up. This was such a strong tool um, that we're really starting to use this more and more again. It's with visuals, visualizations and 3Ds uh, images, we're able to carefully plan out our work so we're more efficient builders all sustainable guys. And constructability reviews can be very detailed like this. And I believe this is a, an image off the San Diego airport parking garage. So once again, we're starting to use these 3D visualizations more and more to communicate of how we build buildings. One of my favorite and cool things to talk about is 3D printing. 3D prints uh, are becoming more and more popular. You know, 3D printing has become more cost effective over the years. This is a presentation of an airport project that we chased, um, and I believe we won it recently. We wanted to communicate to the owner of how 
things were going to be uh, coordinated throughout the job site. We like to put these 3D prints under laser uh, light tables so we can light different things up and show clients and people where they're going to go. We like to use these 3D prints to also communicate with owners of how we're going to impact the surrounding buildings or what is what is my building going to look like when it is next to the larger skyscraper right next door. We like to put where our cranes are going to be placed on the project. Also, the exterior hoists or the elevators that are going to go on up and down the job. This is a cool project, the Blue Origin job that we're building right now in Florida. Um, it's, a, it's a cool project where uh, we had to chase it and compete against another, a lot of other firms. But we chose to 3D print the entire project and show the client owner how we proposed on building it. The next video is going to show you an example of how we produce these 3D print models and put it together. So as you can see, we had to produce all of these 3D prints on individual pieces so we can carefully put it together. What we, what we found out as we were doing that 3D print was there was a lot of different um, design errors that we found and we communicated to the owner. So we virtually built the 3D print and we built the entire space station um, on a smaller scale before we built it um, a couple months down the road. And we found a couple of issues. We communicated that to the designer. They changed it before we ordered all the wrong steel, which all kind of ties back to the saving resources and energy. Last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about model-based estimating. Um, we like to take the 3D models provided by the architects and the engineers and put numbers to them. How many windows are we going to have on the project? How much concrete? How many doors? And as the owner continuously updates their models, we're able to update the cost impacts as well. We like to do with structural steel and concrete, getting more and more advanced of how we properly take off we like to also separate the rooms. Like there may be some rooms that are more expensive than others. And what our programs are trying to do now is break these large scale projects down to room sizes and communicate to the owner saying, hey, you guys have 100 rooms that are fairly priced and 20 rooms that are highly expensive with high end finishes. So last but not least, you know, after all this said and done, I truly believe that BDC reduces three wastes. It reduces time, energy, and materials. For example, time. We, we are able to communicate and, and show clients of how their buildings are gonna be built. And sometimes when we use 3D visualizations, we figure out ways that we're gonna uh, reduce uh, product procurement. We're able to find times how we can build it more efficiently so maybe we get a project from 12 months to 10 months, and it saves time, energy as well. Um, energy, there's times where we could have ordered all the wrong material on the Blue Origin project, but we were able to catch this ahead of time. We communicated with the structural engineer and the client, 
they changed the design and it saves so much energy later on during the project. Same for materials. There's times and times again where we model formwork for a lot of concrete placement. When we do that, we're able to save um, any excess materials that they may buy later on down the road. A lot of times when these carpenters, they get ready to pour a sidewalk or pour uh, some structural footings for a building. They like to just order more material than actually is needed. That's truly waste. And we like to try to reduce that waste so we're a more sustainable company. Last but not least, I just really want to hone in that, you know, engineers and contractors work with architects, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, and computer engineers. But also much needed is skilled craftsmen and women. We need the people that are going to actually be interested in they're very rewarding careers um, and, you know, they pay well and they are uh, highly, you know, successful in their lives. So thanks a lot for listening and learning and I'd like to open it up to questions.